Hello and welcome to Nicholas Children's Health System Learning and Development Choking Educational Video. I'm Linda. I will demonstrate how to help a child who is choking. If choking is severe, CPR may be required. What is choking? Choking means something such as food or an object has gotten stuck in the airway, preventing air from getting into the child's lungs. Choking may be mild or severe. Mild choking means that the child can cough and make sounds. If the child is coughing, let them cough. They're trying to get the object out. If you're worried at any time about the child's breathing, do not hesitate to call 911. Severe choking means the airway is completely blocked. The child may make the choking sign, such as holding his neck with his hand, one or both hands. In severe choking, the child is not able to breathe, to cough, or to speak. Your quick response to choking can save your child's life. You will need to get the object out so the child can breathe. If you think the child is choking, Ask the child, are you choking? Are you choking? If he nods, let them know you're going to help them. I'm going to help you. Get behind the child, reach your arms under the child's arms. Put one fist just above the child's belly button and grab that fist with your other hand. Give quick upward thrust until the object comes out and the child can breathe or cry or until the child becomes unresponsive, like this. Let's try this together. Are you choking? Are you choking? I can help you. One fist just above the belly button, grasping the other. Continue with the upward thrust until the object comes out and the child can breathe or cry or until the child becomes unresponsive. If the choking child is very large, you may give chest thrust instead of abdominal thrust. To give chest thrust, reach your arms under the child's arms, placing your hands on the lower half of the child's breastbone. Pull straight back until the object comes out or the child becomes unresponsive, like this. Let's try this together. For a large choking child, Hands under the child's arms, hands over the lower half of the breastbone, pulling straight back until the object comes out or the child becomes unresponsive. If the child becomes unresponsive, lay the child down on a hard surface, such as the table or on the ground. Yell for help, 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 someone call 911. Hey, you in the blue shirt, call 911. If you're alone, you'll need to provide five cycles of CPR, then call 911. Put the phone on speaker so emergency staff can guide you. Let's try this together. Place the child. Let's place him on a hard surface. Help, help, I need help in here. Somebody call 911. We will start with compressions, 30 compressions. Place the heel of one hand on the lower half of the child's breastbone. Push hard, push fast, counting out loud to a count of 30. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Let's try this together. Find our hand position. Heel of one hand on the lower half of the child's breastbone. 30 compressions, counting out loud. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Now you'll have to check the airway for any objects. Head tilt, chin lift. One hand on the child's forehead, two fingers on the chin to tilt the head back. Check the mouth to see if you see any objects. If no objects are seen, pinch the child's nose, cover the child's mouth, and attempt to breathe. If air does not go in, 
you need to repeat the chest compressions. 30 compressions, lower half of the breastbone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Head tilt, chin lift, checking for objects. No objects are seen. Pinch the nose, attempt to breathe. Repeat the process over and over again. 30 compressions, opening the airway, checking for objects, attempting to breathe over and over until the child wakes up and can cough or cry or to emergency staff arrives to help you. This completes our video on how to help a child that is choking. Now for a conscious child choking between the ages of one and the first signs of puberty, um, 12, 14 years of age, um, this child most likely is choking from a foreign body airway obstruction. Uh, a lot of times it happens with laughter. They might be rushing their food. Um, in, in this case, the scenario is that she was eating grapes, trying to have a e uh, grape eating contest. How many grapes can you fit in your mouth at the same time? And got to laughing and choked on a grape. Um, of course, some of the signs and symptoms of a conscious choking child would be that they're panicking. They want to get help. They don't know what to do. They're starting to get real scared, anxious. And so they begin to get real wide-eyed. They're maybe trying to gag a little bit, trying to cough, but they can't cough, not moving air, maybe high-pitched squeaking noises. Um, also looking for signs of color change, circumoral cyanosis, which is blue colored around the lips. Any of those signs and symptoms we're going to be looking for to know that this person is fully choking and needs our assistance. I come up to the child and I say, hey, are you all right? Are you okay? They don't respond with a vocalization of any sort. They're not coughing on their own. If they were, we would just uh, help ensure that they continue to cough and try to get it out. In this case, she's not moving any air. And she's showing the universal sign for choking. So with the hands around her neck, we're going to go ahead and say, are you all right? Are you okay? There's no response. She's uh, still awake but not um, able to speak. I'm going to raise her elbows, find her belly button. With my thumb tucked in, I'm going to go with my fist against the tummy just above the belly button and then grab that other hand. Now realize, too, that I'm lowering myself so that I'm at the level of the child so I'm not pressing down on the ribs and running a higher risk of fracturing ribs and things like that. I'm getting to the level of the child. I could do that through kneeling, sitting in a chair, uh, maybe sitting on the edge of a couch and bringing the child in front of me as long as they can stand on their own. I grab that hand and then with inward and upward thrusts, I'm gonna go ahead and start my inward and upward compressions. I'm gonna do this until I get the object clear or until the child becomes uh, unconscious and falls limp. If the child becomes unconscious, we're going to assist the child down to the floor so that we don't incur any more traumatic injuries. We're going to begin with an assessment and move to unconscious child choking. Now once this child is unconscious, we want to make sure that we begin with an assessment. We're going to look, listen, and feel. The, the going from standing to laying down could have moved the airway. It could have dislodged anything. We're going to look in the mouth to see if there's anything obvious that we can finger sweep out of there. But the fact that this child went from conscious to unconscious is now the time we're going to activate EMS or call a code. So I'm going to call out to the bystander, hey, you, in the brown shirt, go call 911. I've got a child who went from conscious to unconscious choking. I need an ambulance. Please come back. I might need your help. We've activated the EMS system or the emergency medical services in the area, and now we're going to go ahead and look, listen, and feel for breathing. <clears throat> this child is still not breathing. We're going to attempt two breaths. After the two breaths, do not go in, and I've repositioned and tried again. We're now going to begin our 30 chest compressions, one-third to one-half of the depth of the chest, and we're going to do... 30 chest compressions and then reassess for the obstruction. One and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and 10 and 11 and 12, up to 30. Look in the airway, check for obstruction. If you can see it, we're gonna go in and hook in motion, sweep it out and attempt two breaths. Neither breath went in, reposition the airway, attempt two more. Neither breath went in. We go back to the 30 chest compressions. 
We then go back and look into the mouth. If we see the obstruction, sweep it out, and then attempt two more breaths. This time the two breaths did go in. We're then going to assess for a carotid pulse, airway breathing, and then treat what we find accordingly. So after we've determined that our loved one is unconscious, one of the first things that we want to do is put them on their side to protect their airway. The way we do that is by first taking their arm, moving it above their head. After that, what we want to do is move their leg across their other leg. Now from there, I can take his arm, move it across his body, getting a tight grip on his shoulder and his leg. Then from there, I'll put my knees into him to make sure he doesn't slide and pull him over to the side. And now you can see he's on his side and his airway is now protected.